So when you were out on your own, mm -hmm. when did you first start cooking for yourself? Well, first of all, I had a roommate, James Baldwin, who I played with here in Seattle okay. in 2002 or three, I think it was, maybe three. Um, he was very good at cooking. I was still in the stages of things that were kind of already made to yeah. cook. So it kind of started in that matter. But as I found out, the more uh, I was away from home that and missing the food that I want to cook, and I would always call, like either on Sunday or whatever it may be, to try to figure out, you know, certain aspects of food that I could, that, of choice that I would like to cook. And when I did that, that made it a lot easier for me to, um, like, get through my days um, because it brought back some memories of home, uh, the smell in the house. Yeah. And the one thing you don't want to have to do is when you when you can cook, when you're in the minor leagues, and I always, always stay with a Latin guy. So Latin guys learn how to cook when they're very young, and most majority of them. Yep. And so that helps out a lot. So you learn different aspects of, you know, different uh, fragrances of food and just listening and, like, you know, learning Spanish at the same time and cooking, like, connects everyone. Cooking connects um, people who like to eat and talk and just like people who just like to be in the kitchen and cook for other people to make them feel good. And that was the one thing that I always loved to do. So, um, I don't do it as much now since my kids are like all grown up, but they, now they call me. So, uh, we got so one. Now the rules are reversed a little yeah, bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now, you know, um, they, they, they have special, special orders mm. like, to try to cook. So I just, like what? But so before I left home, um, before I left home, my kid in college, you know, he's in Kansas. He's in a small JUCO in Kansas, and there's not much home cooked food there. So I would cook up like you know a batch of you know like spaghetti, like a plant, uh, a tray of spaghetti. I would always uh, cook like some cabbage. I would cook like some barbecue chicken. I would um, make some uh, some of the lamb chops. He loves lamb chops, so the little small little popsicle mm -hmm. ones. And uh, so just an assortment of other things and just send like a box to him and try to get it there like the next day so yeah. it didn't go bad or whatever. Yeah. And he doesn't share with no one. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I'm like, he's like, no, I just eat it all week. And so it's just. It's, well, that's so, a really high compliment. It's yeah. a really high compliment to you <laughs> that he doesn't want to share his food. Yeah. And it also could be him just being greedy. He's like, well, I don't but I'm going to put the positive yeah. spin on this. Okay. I'm also going to say this. So when I went to college, first of all, my mom thinks that I did not cry when she left. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I cried like a baby, like all night until my roommate came, uh -huh. also named Jennifer. So my mom used to send care packages, and they would include banana bread because my oh, mom I makes my great-grandma's banana bread recipe. It's a great one, right? It was the first time in my life I had this realization. I didn't have to share it with anybody, and I didn't <laughs> have to use a knife to cut it. Wow. This does not make me sound very gracious at all, but I would just take hunks off <laughs> banana bread. I would mm -hmm. offer to share with my roommate, but sometimes she would look at the loaf and be like, no. Uh, no, because you put your whole mouth in hand. I didn't, I didn't put my mouth on it, Mike. You're yeah. making up a story. <laughs> I pushing. would break it yeah. off, and I'd be like, this is great. I'm not sharing. I don't, my brother's not here. My dad's not here. Like, <laughs> This is the benefit of being in college. I get this now. The one thing I'm not, I don't have an, I don't have any ego when it comes to learning, because you have to continue to learn, and that's on, that only makes you better. So I just learned something that make me better in the kitchen. I love this. Look at this. I'm teaching Mike Cameron. And it smells good too. It does smell really good. <laughs> it smells really good, and we're not doing anything to it. No, like it's just it's gonna just sit there, separate. and we're just watching it. Dang. Um, before I ask you about teammate that you were closest to, and what you think you are most known for in baseball. Put that in the back of your mind. What is the dish that you make that reminds you of home most? Well, home cooking is totally different for me now because I learned that I needed 
to kind of clean it up a little bit. <laughs> what do you mean? When, when I mean by clean it up, I mean like m much more a healthier s oh, style. Oh, well, you know, in that, we all in come capacity. to that realization yeah. at some point. Yeah. And uh, instead of me using a lot of more ground beef, I use more turkey. Yep. Um, just like lighter protein, mm -hmm. so to speak. Uh, not much red meat. Um, I do enjoy it from time to time, but I've kind of try to make sure I recognize that. But probably the one thing uh, my stepmom used to cook, like I know it's bad and I just, I love it to death. Is like, she would make these unbelievable pork chops with um, like these, uh, the scallop potatoes. Oh, yeah. oh man, like, and home, like I can't make these myself. I probably have, have to try it, but like real, homemade biscuits. You've not tried to make a biscuit or your grandma or your, your stepmom's well, my biscuit? Stepmom. My stepmom. Yeah. My grandmother is, my grandmother is much more well-rounded with a, you know, like she was big on for me uh, eating like greens, like collard greens yeah. and cabbage. I don't do those and, right. Yeah, so. I don't cook them long enough. I'm impatient. Yeah, you, yeah. so you got to let them cook. Yeah. You know, that's the thing about collard greens. You just got to let them cook and just let them get to a point where they're like, they wilted a little bit more yeah. so anything, so. But, you know, uh, my grandmother is, was big on like turkey necks. Mm. Um, um, let's see, probably some of the best like fried chicken I have. Obviously you can tell I went two different aspects. <laughs> And well, I try not to know, do that as much anymore now. I, but. Can't, I have so much admiration for people who make fried chicken. Fried chicken? Everybody can't make it. No. Because the First of all, is, it makes a mess. Yes. Second of all, I don't have the right recipe for it. So yeah. I, if somebody wants to make it for me, I am grateful. But I, mm -hmm. that is not one of the things that's in my repertoire. Yeah. So, you know, with that fried chicken, I grew up on it so much um, that I knew that I had to, when I started doing it, I just started like baking it because it's yeah. much more healthier yeah. for my kids and air fryers now. That is true. Air fryer is like the new thing I love for everything. Fryer. Everything. I do a lot of things in an air fryer. Yeah. Oh yeah. Literally, you can do everything in there. Mm -hmm. My daughter, she's fourteen. She can cook in the air fryer. So. It's impressive. Yeah. Okay. Now let's get back to my baseball questions. Okay. Because I picked this specifically so we could just sit and talk. Okay. Okay. Teammate you were closest to? Um, I, you know, I played for eight teams. And so I'm friends with everyone. I know. But, I mean, there's one guy that I'm really close to. There are two guys that I'm really close to that I still talk to, like, well, one I talk to, like, every couple of weeks, and that's Booney. Mm. And, uh, Brett Boone. And James Baldwin was my first roommate. Yeah. He was my first roommate in the big leagues. And... Um, we go back since we were eight, since I was 18 years old. So, um, and I just talked to him when I was in Florida, seeing my son in Sarasota. So, um, but Booney, we talk like all the time, all the time, and you know, they're really, really good friends. But I have so many people um, that's been um, inspirational in my journey. You know, Greg Vaughn was like really, he was the kind of the guy that took me under his wing. Uh, when I was when I was first traded from to from Chicago White Sox to Cincinnati, and um, he kind of taught me how to really be a pro, and everything else, you know, just like you build these bonds and relationship with people over the course of your career, um, and people remember you. You know, if you be a good teammate, people remember you for being a good teammate and being a good person. So, um, but Booney is probably number one, and JB is probably number two you know, so to speak. Ichiro was my locker mate. I still, like, he, he he's like anti-social, so. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, now we're telling two negative stories oh, about oh, Ichiro. It's not really negative. It's the not first negative, you're funny. telling the truth, right? The, yeah, it, and let's, here's what yeah. I'm gonna say about each. I'm gonna say that each is very focused on his job. Oh, uh, definitely. Yeah. Always. So it could be perceived as antisocial, or it could be see, per, be perceived as ultra focused. Def, I'll, let's say ultra focused. Ultra focused. Yes, he's still focused on very, his job. Very, very focused on his. Very job. driven. It very, is very incredible. Much. If he, if he could play another fifteen years, he, if it's 
you know, Father Time hasn't came about, he probably would still yeah. be playing. Yeah, he, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Okay, now you talked about people remembering you and if you're a good teammate, there is a lot of things people could remember you for. I know the stories that I have about you. Yeah. What do you think you are most remembered for in the course of your career? Uh, the, the number one thing is um, for Homer game. Th that comes up a lot. Um, How many people have done that? Uh, a lot. I mean, every, oh, I remember you. You, you. No, no, no. I meant how many people have hit four home runs in a game? Oh, like not uh, very up many. to date. There's only uh, I think it's up to like seventeen, maybe eighteen at, at the most. He's a unicorn. Yeah, I was number thirteen. After it hasn't been done since nineteen fifty-seven in the American League. Yeah. So that was pretty special. That's, I have a story about that night. Really. Yeah. Why? How? <laughs> so uh, I was a piano teacher. I needed to make oh, extra so you money. Play piano. I play piano. I was the church organist. I okay. was a piano teacher, and I had scheduled a recital for my piano student kids that night. It was oh. a Wednesday, right? Yeah. And so I'm thinking I'm a I'm also a sports producer at the time, and I had gotten it cleared, and it's like, hey, look, I've got this uh, piano recital. I'm gonna show up just a little bit later, but shouldn't be any problem. It's a Mariners game that night. I've got everything covered. The rundown's in. This is gonna be super easy. I am sitting in the piano recital watching my little kiddos, who did awesome, by the way, <laughs> and I'm starting to have parents like ask me because they were listening to the radio, like coming in, and I'm wow. like. Are you kidding me? Like, I gotta go. You know, like, parents are trying to talk. I'm like, yeah. I am so sorry. I watched all of my kiddos, but afterwards, it's like, I gotta go. Like, I gotta get to work. My camera just hit four whole months. <laughs> so you created a lot of stress for me that night. Are you serious? I'm serious. That was the wow. night. I was like, yeah, piece of cake. Nope, because you and Booney go back to back in the first two ABs, yes. and then you go on to hit four. Yeah, that was uh, pretty special. Um, Everyone asked me, what was I feeling? How did I feel? What did I do? I can't really explain anything other than I felt very, I didn't feel really good going into the game uh, because we kind of, I was struggling a little bit, but I was going to play in Chicago. So every time I played in Chicago, it was like, you must be ready, prepared to put on a show every time. And that was just kind of like something that drove me from my first trade and all that kind of stuff. So uh, that was cool. But, you know, that was in 2002. I, so I had kind of already made my mark against the White Sox already. And it's just like, every time you go back to Chicago, there's a show that needs to be put, you know, that needs to be done. And that was the third game of the series. I already had a pretty good series there. And we were headed to New York after that. And that day, it was, I remember it was cold. Um, we didn't take BP on the field. It was getaway day. Um, I probably had uh, eight cheesecake practice for the third time with, <laughs> with a strawberry shake. And um, yeah, and that day something just clicked. And um, you know, I hit the four homers. I, I literally almost hit five home runs in a game. I hit one foul. I hit, I hit one foul. And I also, the one thing that I that pops up in my mind all the time is like, I robbed a grand slam with Magdalena Ordonez in that game also. I totally so, forgot about that. Yeah, so that was like, a, it was like a complete fulfilled, like day of just, the baseball was stopping and it just felt like everyone that was yelling at me during the whole game, it was just like mumbling in my ear. That's how I was playing the game. I felt like I was playing the game by myself. Um, the guys on the bench were treating me like I was throwing a no-hitter, you know, like no one was talking to me and I'm just like, I'm just over there with my little scully cap on and just having a great time and, I mean, we're winning. We've already, we went in the series. I mean, we're up, you know, 10, 12, 10, was, score 10 runs yeah, in the first inning. Was, so, yeah. you know, it was just, it was unbelievable. I just, I never thought something like that. I never hit four homers in batting practice in a row. So. <laughs> To be able to do that was uh, pretty special. And the closest thing I saw in 2000, I saw A-Rod hit three in Toronto, and I thought he was going to hit four. But, you know, a, a guy of his caliber, I think he gets like a few home runs, they're going to start pitching around it. You know, I was fortunate enough for the White Sox to continue to pitch to me because there were nobody on base because Booney was cleaning everything off. 
So when I came up, there was really nobody on base. So, you know, it just made it a lot easier for me to do it. And I'll never forget it. You know, I remember coming home off the road trip itself after we go to go to New York and coming back. I used to live in Rose Hill and just like from the time I turned on the street to where I, to go to my house, there were like signs like lined up all outside the road. Like so that was like pretty cool. Uh, to be able to do it. My neighbors did all those things. And we had a lot of kids in our neighborhood too, so it made it like really extra special. But they didn't bother me, you know, they just yeah. like congratulated me through the signs and when they saw me maybe go outside or whatever, they would all like speak and everything. So it was pretty special. Pretty special That's really cool. I think yeah. you're also probably known for a couple other things. I Cook, You Measure is presented by Ascend Hospitality Group. Watch the entire episode and season on YouTube.